Welcome, heathens and witches, to the Horn and Cauldron Podcast. Podcast. Yeah, I'm John Norgrove. This is Julie Norgrove. We're here bringing you witchy podcast shenanigans and such. Yeah. I don't, I, don't have, I don't have an intro beyond saying our name, so I'm just winging it. There's definitely an uh, intro. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Uh, we have to, to take Horn a one-week break Podcast. and you forget? Of course, I forget. I forget. If it happened yesterday, I would forget. That's my thing. <laughs> I forget. She does the research. So, either way, she does the research. I'm the color commentary. This is the Horn and Cauldron podcast. Uh, just as a little bit of, I don't know, insurance? I don't know what the word is that people use for this. Uh, whatever. Clarity. We were off last week because I, I was I was busy. I, did, I, didn't, I didn't have the time for that. So, we didn't do the last pub chat. You didn't miss it. Don't worry. Don't panic. It happened on purpose. But we but had to take some time to take yeah. care of ourselves and take care of our mental and physical health yeah, by resting yeah, for a week. Yeah, we just took a little bit of a break. I'm uh, I'm in job transitioni, so that's, you know, a bunch of stuff. So, uh, yeah. Either way, if you're listening to us on, a, on your podcast network of choice, don't forget to leave us a review. That's literally the only way that I know that you're listening. Yep. Uh, we now know that we have seven yeah, listeners. Yeah, we do now know that, we're number, that we have seven listeners. Hello, number seven. Hello, What's number up? seven. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like this video, comment below, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all the stuff. And uh, yeah, whatever. Let's get right into it. Today, we are talking about... Dionysus. Dionysus. Yes. Uh, yeah. This is very exciting. And this one was actually a request from one of our patrons to mm. do a deep dive on this particular deity. I didn't know that. Uh huh. Thank you, Alexa, mm. uh, for the Best. idea. Love. Um, so, yeah. What's the. What's the, what's the it's like, it's like a heart. It's thing. like a little. Is it like a Korean? We were thing? told it's a Korean thing where you yeah, kind of I don't like even know that hold it is. your fingers together. People that are what people that are listening to this have no idea. What we're yeah. Doing. Oh, we're, we're like... holding our thumb <laughs> and forefinger crossed in like a tiny X. Kind of like and it's supposed to be like a wee heart. If you were to like do the money symbol where you like rub your fingers together, but with only one finger and you stop. I so was thinking not like that at I all. I was thinking like it's the sarcastic tiny, tiny violin. Tiny violin. Yeah. yeah. I don't I don't even know where we recently heard that, but I saw like three people in cosplay doing it like literally this morning. And I was like, oh, that's that thing that they were talking about. It still doesn't look like a heart. I don't get it. But that's fine. <laughs> I don't understand much of what human people do. Uh, you humans are weird. So I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Cope with that, I guess. All right. So whomst? The fuck is Dionysus? So Dionysus is a Greek god, um, and some people um, will also call him Bacchus. There are slight differences between so, Dionysus and Bacchus. That's Bacchus the Greek like versus Roman? the Roman. Yeah, okay. Cool. Um, but for the most part, they sort of mishmashed together. So you can kind of use them interchangeably, but I prefer to use Dionysus as opposed to Bacchus. Yeah. Unless uh, we're very as, specifically as talking a, about that. As a very bold aside, Already interrupting. You see how this one's going to go. Um, okay. Guys, so Dionysus. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be like a three hour episode yeah, then. <laughs> I have no clue what any of the research is that she has on this, but I have my opinions on Dionysus as a, as a, as a brown man who drinks heavily. Uh, and um, <laughs> and who's also wearing a Dionysus? And who's also wearing this beautiful Dionysus crown, crown. that Julie made me? Um, That's right. Also, the fireplace area that we're no longer using because spring has sprung in Northern California, at least enough, is full uh, of flowers. Full of flowers, flowers flower for crowns. flower I'm crowns. I'm very so excited for flower I'm crowns. So many flower yeah, crowns. It's amazing. It's the best. Yeah. Um, but for me, Dionysus is always real chill, and Bacchus is like whatever being nightmarishly blackout horrifyingly drunk is right B bacchus is always like a negative god he's the, the is he the mr hyde side to of it? dionysus yeah, is jekyll yeah that uh, yeah that makes sense yeah i don't know i mean i i feel like part of it is because again i'm gonna bring up the iron druid chronicle that those books had an effect on me clearly but um <laughs> like like he has beef specifically with dionysian cults and like a little bit i get that so <laughs> like like i i definitely feel like when i'm talking to somebody about like gods and such 
And they like bring up, and they're like, oh yeah, like I like Dionysus, whatever. You're like, that's gangster. We can have a pint together or like a glass of wine or whatever, red. But if they're just like, yeah, Bacchus is dope. I feel like the next statement that's gonna come out of their mouth is like, why don't we get fucked up and do something dangerous? Like, I just, there's something untoward about you know what? Bacchus I specifically as a separate that, god. And it'll make more sense as we go the, through they and are talk about very the different gods to me. Like, have today. very different, unrelated huh. gods at all. Just like completely different shit to me. And, yeah. and I feel like both experience and the stories that I've read have, uh, like, the, like, fiction novels that I've read have like clearly painted the same like ideological picture. Yeah. And so I support, uh, go Dionysus. Don't trust Bacchus. <laughs> I don't know why it's just a thing for me. I'm not in charge of that. All you right. Know? Well, um, as usual, you're going to be pretty, um, interested in the weird research bits that I have found weird about research. it to share because as usual, and we I think this is probably another drinking game item because we say it in basically every episode, he has no idea the interesting stuff that I've researched except for a couple of tiny tidbits. Oh my God. No. So <laughs> Dionysus is the Greek god of wine, grapes, winemaking. He also um, sees over orchards and any sort of fruit, vegetation, um, just plants in general, um, as well as debauchery, any yeah. sort of debauchery that's happening. Yeah. Um, he Sometimes is, you have to debaucherous. <laughs> he's associated with fertility, especially and mostly male fertility um, and festivity. He's also is he's also um, known as a god and sometimes a patron god of homosexuality, mm. um, not just between men and men, um, but also between women and women, as well as those that are gender fluid and presenting um, maybe a gender like in, that... Yeah, in whatever direction. The, yeah, it's whatever same, way that that works. Thing, yeah. yeah, so he's very associated with that. Um, he's also associated with weddings, because those are big parties. Uh, ecstasy, insanity, of course, sure, because sure. too much will make you go insane. Um, he's also associated with epiphany, yeah. so like sudden clarity, realizations... Yeah, yeah, everybody's had that, right? Uh, when you're drinking and then all of a sudden you're definitely not drunk anymore and you're dead sober and you're like... Well, you have those like sort of like... I probably shouldn't be in this situation. Where you're like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like recently I was like, I am as mostly sober as I need to be yeah. to you. So, you know, that's fun. Yeah. Um, he's also Commitment. strongly associated with sacrifice, rebirth, resurrection, and death. Yes. Um, also religious ecstasy, which is something a little different than standard ecstasy, yeah. uh, and coming of age rituals religious and Religious ecstasy is on one of those Christ checks, regular ecstasy. Mm -hmm. It's a little pill or something. <laughs> I, I don't actually know what ecstasy looks like, but I'm assuming it's a little pill it's, or it's something. A pill. It's yeah. A pill. Okay. Yeah. Gangster. I don't uh, know. he's also associated with coming Bad of stuff. age rituals and customs, uh, in the theater. So Dionysus is- <laughs> And the theater. <laughs> yeah. He's, in he's involved in all of these parties and also like acting or whatever. Yeah, basically. He is also the patron god of the theater. Um, merchants, particularly those who sell any of the things that are his um, sort of uh, Barton niche. Yeah. Uh, he's also associated with loners and outsiders as well as those who don't fit into conventional society. Mm, many people I also, um, many people feel, also feel like he's sort of the patron god of androgyny and that will... We'll come back to that in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like, I feel why. <laughs> I already have loved Dionysus. I'm feeling it. I'm vibing yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So we also talked briefly about Dionysus in episode 16, the Olympian family tree. So this mm -hmm. is definitely a deeper dive into that. But if you want to know more about a variety of different Greek deities. And they're uh, like weird connective nightmare tissue. As well as yeah. um, correspondences for them and what they are the deity of. Um, definitely tune into that episode 16, the Olympian family tree. Um, so all of the, all deities sort of have epithets. So that's like, um, titles, nicknames, nicknames, is a way more sort appropriate of. way to say And, that. Yeah. um, oftentimes these epithets are used particularly with Greek gods, um, as part of their name. So you very often add them to the name, either like before the name or after the name. And there's a ton of them for Dionysus. So I'm not going to hit all of them here, but, um, Dionysus is known as, 
I, I had to put this one first, and I don't have the Greek translation for it, but he's known as the God Who Comes. That's gangster. What's up? It's uh, pretty fantastic. Dionysus knows what's happening. He is also sort of noted as a traveler god, so that's really kind of what this is. Yeah. He, um, in his sure mythos, is. he does a lot of traveling. That's, what, that's, so what, the, that's, what, the, that's what the kids that's are calling these days. Sure. Quote, uh, air quotes. Yeah. <laughs> for that. Um, O-M-E-S. You know what I'm saying? O-M-E-S. <laughs> so, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's also called um, Dysus a Simnetes, who rules the faith, Agrios, which means wild, Bouginis, which is born by a cow. I had to put that in there mostly because it was bougie. <laughs> uh, I laughed a little too hard when I read that. You and laughed I was a little too hard as you just read it right now, in the house, so that's perfectly fair. Cackling yeah. about yeah. how Dionysus may just be the origin of bougie. Yeah, it's um, a different kind of bouge. Yeah, it's he's also bouge. known as Brisus, which is he who prevails, and Bromios, which is roaring. And this is an interesting one because um, Dionysus Bromios um, sort of has ties to a lot of the different sides of him, which is transformation as well as death and also booze. Because yeah, listen, listen, Dionysus <laughs> Bromios sounds like my fucking frat name. What are you talking about? <laughs> Dionysus Bromios, 100% 12 college kids just got like summoned into a frat house. Yeah, that is. That is a fucking great name. Yeah. Holy crap. There's also um, Dionysus Eleutherios, which is the liberator because alcohol typically makes people a lot more loose, <laughs> liberated feeling. Yeah. Um, as well as um, here's another one for the same thing, which is loosener. And this one particularly has to do with anxiety very specifically. So you could kind of consider him a patron God for someone who wants to overcome a variety of forms of anxiety, yeah. particularly social anxiety. And for that, that would be Lysias, Laeus or Laos. Nice. Dionysus. Yeah. yeah. I like that we skipped <clears throat> Dionysus. Fallon of male fertility. <laughs> yes. There is also Dionysus Fallon of male fertility. Yeah. And because we said that out loud, we also have to talk about Dionysus Quiropsalus, um, which translates to pig plucker. And, um, you know, just in case you need to remove any of those pig feathers. Nope, nope, uh, nope, nope, nope. It is, um, it, it ties to female fertility. Because there was, it was because there's a choir of phalluses. There was some sort of, there's some sort of um, tie to the to the Greek slang for vagina that is tied to this word, and I do not know what that is because I am not an expert in ancient Greek. Um, but if you know, definitely let me know because now I, mean, I got to know. That's the name of the band, right? Choir of Phalluses? Choir of <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. So those are Anywho. some of his epithets, <laughs> if you're interested in calling upon him and giving a little bit of flattery. Yeah. Um, and we'll have we'll have all of those in the Book Shadows page. We right? sure will. Yeah. yeah. So there are there are some there are some sneaker ones that'll be in the Book Shadows page. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Dionysus is often described as an as a middle aged man who is bearded and robed and typically wears a cloak um, or he is completely opposite of that. Well, maybe not completely opposite. He is um, different than that. And he um, can also appear often as a young, half naked fully androgynous style youth. And it's interesting that you say this bit about him with the version of Bacchus v. Dionysus, mm -hmm. because um, there's really no there's really no difference um, between like what they're called and the iconography behind them. But oh, to sure, me, totally, yeah. you describing it like chill party time guy is like bearded and robed Dionysus and like or like chill party time guy and then like wild party time guy is like the half naked youth guy that's the way yeah. i see it in my mind yeah sure 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 i mean I, i've always sort of seen dionysus as like as like an older like i don't know about middle-aged mostly because i don't know what the fuck middle age means anymore it's um, us it's this right now we're middle-aged oh yeah i mean that's fine sure <laughs> yeah whatever <laughs> I don't know what it means. Uh, people seem to be overly concerned about their age. You get over it. That's how time works. You've, you've been taught this. Um, 
But like I've always seen Dionysus as sort of like whatever 30s something, you know, like beard, chill, not like woo! Not he, he's not like a woo girl about it, as it were. Yeah. Um but I don't know that I've ever I've never really thought of Bacchus as like <clears throat> young frat dude definitely not androgynous i would argue that i've always thought of dionysus as more androgynous than bacchus mm. as androgynous for me bacchus is like you know on you know honestly what it is bacchus is the that fucking greek theater arts robot from um from futurama, from futurama. yeah yeah <laughs> where it's it's not that he's like young and like like a like rage party but he's just He's just like a shit disturber that's like, like <laughs> so like into the like, like the like the drinks and the drugs and and all the chaos that like everything he says is just taken by his cult. I would argue, I would argue that uh, I genu, I generally perceive like Bakkins, people who follow Bacchus as like the younger rage party crowd and Dionysians as being the like older, more mature, mm -hmm. but also like. Let's drink a bunch and get fucked up. Uh, crowd. Mm -hmm. Right. So I feel like for me, it's more of like who follows, but I both kind of see them as around the same age, but just with like a different maturity. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, there's no reason for any of this, by the way. This is just <laughs> like the thing that has always separated those two people to me to the point that I often, when somebody's talking about Dionysus and or Bacchus, I have to look up to remember that they're connected <laughs> because for me, they're like completely separate people. Yeah. Right. It would be like saying Thor and Zeus. Yeah. Like both lightning, but that's not at all the same thing. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's to me completely separate entities, right? Yeah. Like no connection, separate entities in my mind. And that's, that's why th that I get that. Like that, like, um, cognitive dissonance mm -hmm. when talking about them being like one's just Greek and one's Roman, but they're like the same God. Yeah. Like that's just not at all the way that it like, like clicks in my head for Interesting. lack of better words. Yeah. No, even though like I fully understand iconographically speaking, same, same. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's just, I don't know why that's just like the thing for me. Yeah. So sometimes Dionysus also is shown uh, shorn, is shown having I mean, sometimes he's shorn, but you gotta pay double for that. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Um so sometimes he is also shown having horns like oxen or like a bull does. Mm. So that's another interesting sort of variation there. But you very often see him carrying uh what's called a thyrsus, which is a staff and that's made from the stalk of a giant fennel plant so fennel is like a bulb plant and it mm -hmm. has like a really long stalk that grows up mm -hmm. and then at the very top it has like little clusters of like flowers that turn into seeds and mm -hmm. then around it are sort of like others of these we actually see these in northern california all the time because they're on the side of the road and they're just like these big weird bush things that are like super green and pretty mm -hmm. in the in in the spring mm -hmm. and then in the fall they're just like giant dead stick things mm. um so that's what so giant fennel very tall um is so that, is that basically the weapon of those screamy nomads from the mandalorian is it one <laughs> side like a ball with a spike and the other side's like a weird flower with a spike uh, i think so but yeah. i'm not sure so so the staff <laughs> that he carries around is made from the stalk of a giant fennel plant, that's gangster yeah and it's topped with a pine cone and it's covered in ivy and honey yeah, uh and this staff i know right this staff is used not only as like a like a holding thing right but also as a weapon as well as a magical weapon yeah. that he used to destroy uh, those who did not believe in his cult or the freedoms that it represents. I fully support that. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm fully in in uh, in support of destroying people who don't believe in freedom. Hey, with some herbs. Do peace, guys. Yeah. Yeah. 
do peace. Yeah. Uh, he often is, wears a uh, like a diadem, which is like a crown or like a headband, mm. um, which is decorated with gems, vines and flowers. Mm. So in most art, this is seen as like grape leaves and vines yeah. uh, and like grapes themselves, um, yeah. just like chilling on his head. Um, he also often carries like a cup or a jug um, with which to drink out yeah. of. And along with him comes a retinue of satyrs, maenads, dancers, and other general party goers. So satyrs are half man, half goat. And when they are chilling with Dionysus, they basically run around all the time with erect penises. In fact, most of the art about these satyrs, that is the older art, like ancient art, Mm -hmm. tends to show them running around with erect penises. Mm -hmm. uh, it isn't actually until like the Sons 18... of Priapus over here. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> it actually isn't really until like the 1800s when the there was like a huge resurgence of interest <laughs> when in the Greek When the Christians stuff. were finally like, no more hard penises, guys. Yeah, it's the Victorians too, were it's like, too weird. Hide those dicks, yeah, boys. Um, yeah, and like the fur, sh it it covers things. Yeah, yeah, and that was kind of like right around the time, um, <laughs> you know, that 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 stuff sort of changed yeah, yeah, there. Yeah. So you can still see like paintings, particularly like eighteen hundred, so late seventeen to like mid eighteen hundreds paintings of satyrs like chasing pretty ladies and mm -hmm. stuff. There's a lot of paintings about Dionysus and his retinue of people and particularly yeah. of satyrs. Um and um you just don't see giant rock hard you just secret penises. You yeah. just don't know about them. Yeah, they're just yeah. they're just not there. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um yeah. So those are the satyrs and maenads are women who wear wreaths of ivy and snakes on their heads or around their necks sometimes. And uh they're commonly called mad women. So there's like a bunch of memes about this like I want to go join the maenads because they were like crazy women who lived in the forest and they would like the thing was like you don't fuck with a maenad because like maybe they're just going to kill you. Um so that's kind of definitely a thing. Um mm. basically the maenads were mad women women who were driven mad, who then went to go and live in the woods with Dionysus and the satyrs. And they are driven so insane by the powers of Dionysus, presumably. Sure. <laughs> that yeah. um, they're driven to sing and dance with a mix of basically wine and crazy. So basically I mean, they I mean, go nuts just, just, and then go party in the let's woods. Just, let's just while. take this back like 45 <laughs> percent. Uh, is it nuts to want to be happy, sing and dance, and drink a bunch? Because and run around with permanently horny satyrs, half man, half goat. What I'm going to say is, no, probably not. The snakes? Who doesn't like snakes? Snakes are like people, but slithery. <laughs> I don't I even, guess. I don't even I don't know. know how to handle that. I like snakes. I think snakes are dope. <laughs> so there's that. Whatever, right? Like, yeah. No, I get it. That's, that's gangster. That's gangster. I want to say... Were the Maenads? Oh, no, I think they were Dryads in the um, Hercules movie. I don't know. Yeah, I was because Phil is a satyr. And so I was, I was like, I know he was chasing some chicks in the woods, like at the beginning of the movie or like whatever, when you first meet him or whatever. Well, and but no, those are those are dryads. Those are dryads. He may have That's also, totally right. he totally may have right. also been maenads. chasing nymphs. Uh, oh, maybe he was chasing <coughs> nymphs. Yeah. Dang, I don't know. Nymphs don't also now. kind of wander around with Dionysus sure, from sure, time sure. to time, but sometimes. Honest, I don't even not. know that I remember what Dionysus looked like in that movie. Oh, I definitely don't. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, but it's been a while since I've seen that movie. Dionysus looks fucking gangster in um Hades. Hades that the, game. The game. Yeah. yeah. If you haven't played Hades the game, like legit set aside some time, buy that game. It's on Steam or whatever. Like, we're not associated with it. I just fell in love with that game. Also, it's like yeah. incredibly difficult. And it's it's a uh, roguelike. So yeah, yeah, infinitely repeatable. Yeah. Which is the kind of gameplay that I like. But um, yeah, Dionysus looks awesome in that game. Yeah. Yeah. All the all of the Greek gods do in that game. It's so beautiful. <laughs> they really oh, do. Everything's oh my so God. beautiful. It's so such a beautiful yeah, game. Major cosplay yeah. plans there. Oh, yeah. So who is related to Dionysus? Um, this is actually I usually talk about this one a little bit earlier, but this one is super weird. Um, and there's a lot of like there's a lot. <laughs> to unpack here. So we're going to start with parents. So Dionysus' parentage is 
contested. And that's really because as time went on and people continued to worship Dionysus in new and in interesting ways, there was a lot of different ways that he came about, basically. Mm -hmm. So there's not really one most common story that I can give you, like with the Aphrodite one um, we talked about. There's really two main origins for her. Yeah. There are a whole bunch of these for Dionysus. So I'm just going to kind of hit some basics of some of these. Yeah. So um, Dionysus may have been the son of Zeus and Semel, who was a mortal, um, mortal woman who basically like fell in love, like Zeus came down and was like sexy guy or like a serpent, depending on the thing. And she was like, hey, what's up? Thing, let's right? uh, let's get busy. And he was like, all right. So she got pregnant. And then she was like, man, that Zeus guy, he was was fantastic. I'm pregnant with his baby. How great is that? Yeah. Um, and she um, she basically prays and Hera is like jealous and is like, hey, so um, if you really if he really loved you, he would show you his true form. But like Olympian gods knew that they couldn't show their true form to mortals because they would die. Yeah. So she In prays my to mind, Zeus. It's exactly what happens when you open open the Ark of the Covenant. It is right. A hundred percent. It's not In my quite mind. That. Like any time a, it's an more Olympian like when a is like, this gets... is what I look like. And mortals are just like, ah! as it like blows their flesh from little, their bones. The way that this is the way that this particular story is described. It's a little bit more like, um, like when a vampire gets in the sunlight. So Samel nice. like is like Zeus, baby, honey, baby, daddy, like, Sup. like, I just, Something I love you so much. Form. And like, I would Dog. really have, like, I'd love for you to grant this wish. And he's like, anything for you, boo. And she's like, let me see your real form. And he's like, ooh, but I said anything. So I have to do this. So he no. shares her, her, his real form. And well, she turns into ash, no. but he takes the baby because the baby didn't turn into ash. Don't ask me how, I don't know. Well, the baby um, didn't see his true form, right? The baby was protected. So by he takes the baby stomach? and then sews the baby into his thigh to finish gestating. Oh, is he the thigh baby? Yes, uh, oh. or at least one of them. So that's how Love Zeus that. and Samel created uh, Dionysus. Sure. There's also Zeus and Persephone. And in this particular one, Demeter was like, my daughter is so hot. Everybody wants to be with her. Yeah, so I'm going to hide her away in a cave. Mm -hmm. And Zeus is like, I'm going to find a way into that cave. And he definitely finds a way into that cave and makes yeah. a baby with Persephone. Huh. Um, and then there's Zeus and Demeter. And actually, there's not really a whole lot about this. They were just like Demeter and Zeus. They had a baby. Yeah. So there's not really a lot there. And then as you continue on, um, there's like forwards through historical make believe. Forwards through historical make believe. Um, there's also a story that has uh, Dionysus being the child of Ammon, who is an Egyptian god, who huh. is more or less the sun god, but it's complicated. Yeah. Um, and Amalthea, who was Isn't a that the bad guy from the a human from the uh, from the mummy movies, Agamemnon. N no, Agamemnon is a Greek uh, king that is totally different. <laughs> so those are his parents. Now, in, in any of these stories, there are all there's a whole bunch more that goes into like his origin stories. Yeah. And in several of these, he is also raised by a foster parent or mother or sort of depending anywhere between a human to another deity to the um, centaur teacher guy, Kiron. So there's very complicated. Yeah. Now, when it comes to siblings, he's got a ton of siblings. Thanks, Zeus. Yeah. That's I'm a, not that's even going to list them Zeus all. Thing. What is he? <laughs> if Zeus is his real dad... This just sounds like a, like an episode of of Maury. Um, yeah, it was probably yeah. it's probably old. So we're not whatever, talking about that. Whatever young people watch nowadays. Spouses. Well, okay, okay. Before before though, because there are so many different potential parentages of um, Dionysus. What do you think? Comment comment on the YouTube video or like hit us up in social. Yeah, media let us know what your Who are you? What's, what's your origin Dionysus story is? origin story is? Yeah, I guess like like I don't know. I that's that's my answer. I, I don't am, know. Uh, I'm I'm leaning towards uh like probably Zeus and Persephone. Oh, see, I lean more towards Zeus and Samel. Yeah, is my personal preference there. Yeah. 
Uh, but some of that is because that is the origin story that I kind of grew up with. So mm -hmm, I definitely mm -hmm. understand that. But we would I, love to hear what I your definitely take is. had no basis of starting information on where Dionysus came from before say before you said. What you said. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. Yeah. So moving on to spouse, um, Dionysus did have a wife. His wife was Ariadne, who was a human woman who in some mythology side of things, she becomes a deity and in some of them she doesn't. And there's like a constellation. There's a whole bunch of stuff there. But he, he was married to her. He was very devoted to this wife, actually. Um, and he also had many lovers as well. This didn't really seem to cause them any issues in their relationship, just yeah. to note. Yeah. Um, I Hashtag mean, polyamory. Yeah, basically. Uh, and one of his lovers was Aphrodite, yeah. which leads me into children. He had a pretty fair amount of children. He, um, Him and Aphrodite um, were the parents of Priapus, which is the uh, fertility deity who basically always has a rock hard erection since yeah. he was a tiny baby he's the he's the patron saint of erections yeah we talked about him a little bit more in as well as his origin story in the aphrodite deep dive and i don't mm -hmm. have that episode number in front of me but aphrodite deep dive yeah. there you go um he is also the father of um hymen who is the Greek goddess of marriage ceremonies. Don't know that I knew that that was a Greek <laughs> goddess. I feel like I'm being lied to right now. Continue <laughs> on. He was also the father of Thoas, who is a mortal king. Uh, Cephylus, who may have been a god of wine or may have just been a mortal. Kind of depends on what it is that you're looking at there um, in terms of stories. Onipion, he was either a god of some stuff or just some jerk. Yeah. Onipion, who was another mortal king. Comus, who is the god of reveling, chaos, and nocturnal dalliances. Oh, that's a very fancy <laughs> way of saying that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whatever, dog. Yeah, so that is definitely your frat bro. Um, he was also father of Pthonus, who is the god of jealousy, and the father of Deonyra, who is the who is a mortal woman and was actually the wife mm. of Heracles. Hmm. Yeah, um, he's also the father with Aphrodite uh, or father with Aphrodite. Him and Aphrodite also were parents of the yeah. the three graces, which are sometimes known as the charities. They're the goddesses of beauty and goodwill and creativity. And there's a whole ton yeah. of um, Victorian area paintings about those three naked women. Hmm. Hmm. So he's got a lot to unpack yeah, in the bunch, family department. a bunch of kids. <laughs> Weird family get togethers. These guys, when they have the picnic in the park, fucking inappropriate park it's a very inappropriate park. <laughs> yes yeah so the earliest mention of dionysus name which actually some people think is a modified version of zeus's name dios um that may just yep, exactly mean the same as zeus yeah so it may same. just mean young zeus the, yeah. the name dionysus is kind of <laughs> what they're thinking um appears in tablets dating back to 1300 bce yeah. so this is like three thousand years ago 3,000? No, it's probably more than that. Is that how that math works? 3,322. Thank honey, you. You can't add 1,300 to 2,200. No, I or, just or like, 2200. I 100% oh used up oh my, my math God. quota before I did that. 2,022. 2,200. <laughs> Trying to live in the future already, guys. Get your shit together. Go to the future. Watching too yeah. much Star Trek. Yeah, um, so... <laughs> These tablets date back a super long time. Um, and this is not the oldest of the deities that we've talked about, but this is certainly not the youngest ones either, but it's quite a long time. Sure. Um, though the info from this time actually suggests that his wor worship was already well-founded and may have been around for several hundred years prior to yeah. that. Um, I'm just, I'm just going to put this out there. They were all well-founded and the Greeks were just like, hey, who do you worship? The same part of our yeah. guys. Who do you worship? Part of our guys. What is that? A lady one? Uh, she's the girl one in our guys. What do you worship? He's one of the ones in our gals. They, we don't care. Yeah. Right? I feel like the Greeks were just like Pokemon. What if we collected them all? Oh, yeah. They definitely <laughs> had a lot. Every time I'm doing some research on Greek deities, I'm just like, who is this person I've yeah. never heard of? Yeah, totally, um, totally. And why are there four deities for the same thing? Yeah. Um, anyway, scholars believe that he's actually one of the earliest gods that was worshipped in Greece, which is really interesting because that actually ties back to pre-Greek, pre-ancient Greek 
culture sure. into proto Indo European culture, sure. which I believe we also talked about in the Aphrodite episode. Um, and that goes back to sort of like the time of like Stonehenge, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. In the uh, Neolithic period I and mean, megalithic period. There's a well. bunch of arguments that say that the only reason why we have like culture and society and we like have agriculture is to get fucked up more efficiently. So yeah, like that's some for real shit. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. I imagine the first dude who ate like some vaguely concerning looking grapes and then was like, wow, do I feel surprisingly gangster? Um, was like, hey, guys, how do we get more of these fucking weird, gross looking berries? Yeah, they look fine. but You got to let them sit. Sometimes they look fine after you let them sit. Sometimes that guy died because you let them sit too long. How do we figure this out? And they're like, well, I guess we should build houses and fields and shit and like adult the fuck we should up. do more of this yeah so yeah now booze. like isis and aphrodite which we talked about in their own separate deep dive episodes dionysus was often syncretized with other gods so popular gods that he was sort of melded with um was were zeus hades Helios, which is a sun god, mm-hmm. Iacchus, which is um, the husband of Demeter, Persephone's mother, Sabazios, who is a um, pizza company, no, a Phoenician <laughs> god, um, as well as Osiris. And this is interesting because the potential. Ptolemaic rulers in England, that's um, Cleopatra was one of them, claim to be descendants of Dionysus. And pharaohs, which the Ptolemaic rulers were also, you know, sort of acting as, sure. pharaohs claim to be descended from Osiris. So we can sort of see that maybe that's part of why they are blended there. They're both gods of a surprisingly similar, similar amount yeah, of things. Totally. Yeah. And even stranger than that, he is sometimes syncretized with Yahweh. And um, this is, hold your horses. This is because Dionysus is said to be exactly like Sabazios, um, a, a god in the Middle East. Uh, and ancient scholars pointed out that there are numerous connections to Sabazios and Yahweh. And then later on, we see these comparisons to Dionysus and Sabazios. And yeah. then we sort of connect those dots and it's there. It does not mean that they are the same person. Sure. Um, but it does mean that there are really interesting similarities between these. And we do see with a lot of pantheons that there's a lot of similarities between this God does this and he, over here and this God does something similar over here. Yeah. So it's sort of puts a lot of interesting pieces together there as um, I've, I've read recently a resurgence of people talking about like the Abrahamic pantheon, like the Christian pantheon, the yeah. Hebrew pantheon, that sort of thing. Um, so that could certainly That'd be very um, gangster. Be if Dionysus was also Yahweh. They were just like the same, same. That would be quite gangster. That would be very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Now this belief that Dionysus and Sabazios and Yahweh were basically the same person in ancient times was so widespread. They even minted coins showing a kneeling king, often the sign in ancient times of Yahweh as well as Sabazios, um, with that like a hand, mm-hmm. the hand of Sabazios. Uh, and um, the king kneeling was called Bacchus Judeus. That's fucking awesome. Wow. Yeah. So again, wow. not That's saying that they cool. are the I same person, but so many people yeah. back then felt that, that they just minted like, coins. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, <laughs> talking about his... Um, birth and resurrection is also interesting. Um, Who are we talking about? Jesus? No, we're now we're talking back about, we're not talking about Jesus now. We're talking about Dionysus again. So as a baby, there's a huge variety of myths that deal with Dionysus' birth and resurrection. Now, some of these have it um, about his actual birth and then a, a death right after and then a resurrection. And some of them, these pieces happen in different times. So most of them kind of follow a similar idea. So Dionysus is born of Zeus, whoever the mom is. Hera becomes jealous and tries to get the child bodied. Uh, and in this Samel one, that's because she appeared to Samel to try to have Samel see his, you know, Zeus's real form, which would presumably kill her as well as the baby. There are other versions of this and some of them entail Hera getting the Titans who were locked up um, or sort of scattered around the world to find baby Dionysus and literally rip him apart while he was alive. 
And sometimes... I'll kill a baby. Yeah. And sometimes the person who was incited, a person or people who were incited by Hera to kill baby Dionysus was because they were driven mad, at least temporarily. Mm. Uh, now, most of these have to, most of these at some point in time in Dionysus' birth, death, resurrection story has him being eaten alive. Um, sometimes eaten well cooked, but almost all of them, he is torn apart and eaten alive. Mm -hmm. Um, and then after this child is killed, he is reborn in a variety of ways and is often raised by surrogate parents, which we mentioned before. Now, a lot of this side of things really ties into the way that he was worshipped and his feast days and his festivals back in the day. Hmm. All right. Well, that's, uh... I'm seeing, I'm seeing a bunch of that monotheistic uh, Yahweh Judeo Christian sort of connections with the like, you know, birth, death, resurrection, just with a bit more wine. Yeah, which yeah. Support. It is surprising how many connections there are, but again, it's of one of those things where once you see it, then you're definitely looking for it. So, is it actually there, or is it just because you're looking for it? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's um, you know, nobody actually knows because none of us were alive. And if you were alive then and you happen to be listening to this, why haven't you made me into an immortal yet? Yeah, hey. One, let's be friends. Two, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Uh, you could there could be some more immortals. What's up? I'm wicked smart, dog. Uh and three, fucking tell us, bro. You don't have to put on a pot. Listen, you you come over, you tell us we've got to share with nobody. Just our secret. Yeah. Who, who's Dionysus' mom? What's up? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Give yeah, us just, the answer. Yeah, give me, give me the details. <laughs> Secret Mori Povich. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, all of Dionysus' worship and festivals sort of are similar things, right? So they kind of all are the uh, a similar thing across all of these. But I'm going to throw these out there at you the mean beginning. You just get fucked up? Did basically okay, so thanks. um his like his festivals worshiping Dionysus is often tied to having processions which is like parades uh and feasts and drinking and recreational intoxicants shall we say um we shan't having flowers or vines as decoration plays and poetry and singing uh as well as competitions for those sort of things um it's funny because the oscars just happened here yeah. um so <clears throat> doing a lot of this research i'm reminded of the oscars uh, just because that happens to happen uh, at this time during the yeah. year well and it's it's a competition about plays yeah basically. I mean, it's like 12 orders of magnitude away from any sort of logic that makes sense to that statement. Yeah. But like, whatever, Hollywood's a nightmare. So yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and there were also drinking games. So uh, some of Dionysus festivals, which we actually aren't going to be talking about. <laughs> In my about, mind, it's just a bunch of Greeks playing flip cup with like porcelain cups. It's like um, flip. It broke again. That would have landed. You know, <laughs> I feel like it probably wasn't flip cup, but I feel can like a, can we get like a I feel frat like bro they college drinking probably sitcom probably had degrees? like I think they probably had a you know variety of games like that don't involve flipping a cup just because uh, what about what broken. about king cup that you like, could have played that right king that's cup the, they probably would have had isn't king cup the bounce of a coin yeah beer yeah. pong probably yeah, what's wow. the one where how you, like, you make a, how do you make how do you make an old timey ping pong ball. Well, they would just probably use like tar or wax or something. Yeah, I don't think a wax. Oh, oh, I see. You just mean like throwing it like no bounce rules. Yeah. Yeah. OK, I support. Yeah. Um, most. I mean, I don't, I don't know, know all about the drinking the games back then, the but most called. of the drinking games had to do with who could drink their drink faster. Very simple stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. Totally. Now, if you are looking to worship Dionysus, you can do a ton of other things that don't involve getting riggedy wrecked. So you can take any of these things and sort of like push that to a place where you enjoy. So if you don't drink or if you don't do sort of recreational um, intoxicants, then you can do all sorts of things. Um, and really the thing about devotional acts is a devotional act is whatever is the most sense for 
you. It doesn't matter what it is that they want. It matters the intention that you are putting behind the devotional act itself. And it doesn't necessarily for Dionysus have to be a, like a rococious party or anything like that. So that said, let's get into it. So the first of these feast days that we're going to talk about is Dionysia. And uh, Dionysia is his oldest festival and uh, was actually celebrated twice. It was so old and so much fun. They did it twice a year. So <laughs> the death's so nice. They did it twice. <laughs> It's good. It's good. So in rural areas, this celebration happened first and it happened in late December and early January. Mm -hmm. so, and this was typically called Lesser Dionysia. So during this, um, a parade um, happened and people carried, they dressed up and they carried phalluses and long loaves of bread and jars of water and wine and other offerings. And young Sounds girls. Like those jars of water were probably vodka. Uh, maybe we've all been to a parade, <laughs> right? Oh, I need this Alhambra. I'm gonna pour a little bit of it in my orange juice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Uh, actually, they were probably parade using secrets. it to water down the wine so that they could drink for longer and not yeah. die. And not but die. <laughs> yeah, it is uh, and hot. young girls also carried baskets uh, with like flowers and vines and stuff like that. Sure. Uh, and then after the parade, people would watch plays and poetry slams and drama competitions. Sure. So that's lesser Dionysia. Now, in urban areas, this was celebrated as greater Dionysia, and it took place basically three months after, which is around the spring equinox. It sounds like the urbanites were just lazy at planning <laughs> regular Dionysia, and like a bunch of farmers who had to pay attention to calendars and shit did it first. I... And then several months later, some fucking business dude, ancient Greek business dude was like, oh, we forgot to do the thing. Hey, everybody, this one's more gangster, right? What about we make this one greater? And they're like, I mean... Yeah, I guess fuck farmer, sure. I see, I look at it in a different way. <laughs> Basically, out of Lesser Dionysia happened a, like a couple of weeks after Saturnalia, based on well, the time in, frame. In the area. And the hangover was so intense. They were like, I'd never want to party again. And then by the time spring came, they were like, let's party. I mean, a three month hangover, that sounds about right. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, this was held uh, around the time of the spring equinox. So, um, it had also a parade similar to the rural. Basically, everything that they had in the rural and the lesser Dionysia. But, but with some more stuff, right? Was more. Yeah, doesn't this right? still sound like a bunch of urbanites taking our parties and yeah. trying to turn them into yeah. some sort of weird so business parties? So there was a parade that was similar to the rural parades, but <laughs> way more elaborate. People mm -hmm. dressed up in costumes, and it was very common for people to dress up as followers of Dionysus. I would love to see an ancient satyr, like furry suit. Yeah. I I, I would love well, that. Well, I mean, that's just a dude wearing fur pants with a boner sticking out of it. I mean, I want to see I'm it even still. I'm not saying that there's a bunch of parades where probably that's already happening I'm sure. still. I'm but sure there probably is. There are. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it is way more elaborate. Also, ugh, uh, warm. Yeah. Uh, and people uh, also have that, you know, so not only do people carry the phalluses and the long loaves of bread and the jars of water and the wine and the offerings, but they also had a giant phallus that was rolled around in a cart. Guys, I cannot That's a express full of dicks. I enough can't tell you how happy I am about how this. How much the Greeks were like Dionysus equals dicks. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Listen, everywhere listen all this was was a bridal shower this is just what what is what is that called what's that uh what's bachelorette that bachelorette party. bachelorette party this is just a bachelorette party on on you know more yeah everywhere <laughs> yeah wang yeah um it was, it was like watching that movie watchmen uh <laughs> <laughs> you're like hey should we edit should we cgi this dong and some guys just like no, leave no, no. it in i'll do it <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> because this is the thing. It, bigger. it wasn't filmed. It was added. Right? Clearly. It's which means that there was specific. one person. It's the uh it's the from that Rick and Morty episode when they're when they're making fun of Rick oh. that um that Morty was that Morty was a hologram yeah. also. And they're like, Chuck asked to do it the whole time. Because <laughs> yeah. they're like weird about nudity or whatever. And Chuck's just like, guys, you said you wouldn't tell him, or whatever the fuck. 
You know, it's like that thing. There was just some CGI artist at Weta or fucking ILM or yeah. whoever did that movie. I think it was ILM. I don't know. Who did that movie? Who was just like, I want to do the Blue Wang. And they were like, gangster, because none of the rest of us want to. I don't know. Whole job. Like... And this is what I'm going to say <laughs> right now. Whoever did the dong, the blue dong, impressive. Impressive because yeah. it's you literally a bunch of hours the making sure that shit. The only thing I remember about that movie, I am an adult, and I was an adult <laughs> when I watched adult. that, and I can hold my, I can hold my shit, but I. It was distractingly I, dongish. I, yeah, yeah. I every saw time, it in the theater. Every time that guy was on the screen, yeah. Oh, I left the theater being like, "Hey, I should probably read this comic book." Comma, what was with that dong? Comma, was this a great movie? Comma, seriously, what was with that dong though? So mostly yeah, dumb, 50% mostly dumb, dumb, 50% story, which I mean, I guess that was the goal. I don't Basically know. at this point in time, all, because it's been a very long time since I've seen it. And I know people are gonna be like, you should rewatch it, but I don't care. Um, <laughs> Your opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> basically, I, the only things I can remember of that movie is Blue Dong. Yeah. And there's like a sex scene in like a, like a, with a sex scene, not with the Blue Dong guy, a sex scene with the owl guy and the yellow girl in a, okay. like, in like a plane or like a spaceship. Sure, sure. Yeah, sure, I sure. don't know. Um, but in my mind's eye, that spaceship that they're in or whatever, whatever this thing is, is actually the like top level of the laboratory from uh, Nightmare Before Christmas <laughs> that the, Claymation yeah. guy uh, Honestly, if, if I'm <laughs> if I'm gonna tell you anything, all right, this is what I remember from the movie. Um Blue Dong. Owl Man is just Batman, but with owls. That's it. That's the end of that. I don't know anything else about him, except for he's just Batman, but with owls. So what if owls man? Right? Um, and that a bunch of people died in that. Oh, see, I don't even remember that. I, and this is the thing. I don't know if a I bunch of people died. I was paying to the paying attention to the most important parts. Yeah, the dong and the sex. <laughs> the dong yeah, and no, the that's, sex. that's fair. I, and I don't even know if like actually a bunch of people died in that, or if that's just a projection. But like in my mind, specifically, the blue guy was real murdery. I mean, it can't be and any like, worse than than what anything, Batman v Superman. Anything that any of the superhero movies have done. They're yeah. very murdery movies. Like Marvel doesn't show blood, but um. If if Captain America's shield bounces off you, your whole organs yeah, are Yeah, you're burst. done. So you're, you're a done. corpse. Welcome to Earth, I guess. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, like 100%, dude. Yeah, I just, I just, it was mostly Dong. I'm yeah. going to be real with you. It's mostly Dong and just bad science. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, giant phallus carried on a cart. Part of the parade. 45 minute conversation about being um, dumb. Now, later. they did also do the plays and the poetry and the drama competitions, but they were usually much larger, held in larger places, mm -hmm. and they had noteworthy like contestants. They had like celebrity ga mm -hmm. guests, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and there were also prizes in multiple categories. I don't know what the prizes were, but I I'm wish gonna guess I dogs. could find out. Yeah. Um, like just dogs. more dogs. Also, I'm sticking with my original observation here. It sounds like lesser Dionysia, gangster party, <laughs> greater Dionysia. What if Hollywood got their hands on it and tried to make it like pomp and circumstance? And that sounds fucking lame. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, it was in the urban areas. I live in the woods. Fuck urban areas. No. Awful places. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, my vote is lesser Dionysia. What's up? Let's let's do that next year. Lesser Dionysia party. It's happening. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, decisions have been made. So next up is Anthestria. Now we're going to talk about other things that sort of like that sort of like jive with Dionysia later, but we're going to kind of switch gears a little bit. So Anthestria happens um, in late February, or early March. It happened this year between the 11th and 13th of February, and during this particular festival. It is said that the dead rose from the underworld to just kind of like hang out generally. And not just the dead, but also the Kiris, who are the female goddesses of death, especially bloody or violent death. And they would also hang around and also have to be banished at the end of the festival. The information that we have about these Kiris and even the pictures have them look somewhere between harpies and Valkyries, which is a very interesting sort of similarity between a couple of different points there. 
Um, and people were so scared of these Kiris as well as the um, as well as the the dead that people chewed hawthorn or buckthorn leaves and smeared their doors with tar for protection. So um, <laughs> that was during the whole festival. So um, so this festival has an interesting structure um, that it, we see in other festivals associated with Greek deities. And on the first day, so again, these festivals were kind of three days. It's sort of the magic number for festivals in um, ancient Greek worshipness. And on the first day, which was Pythoigia, uh, they opened vats or bottles of wine and they mixed it. And this was sometimes with other wines, but mostly with water because if you're watering down the wine, you can drink a lot more wine. And basically the goal was to drink only wine until you were done. Um, and then they also decorated yeah, with like flowers and stuff like that. Yeah. Remember that time I tried to drink an entire box of wine? That I do. Yeah. Uh, Good times. Yeah. Fun times. I, I'm sure dad does too because you had to pick him up. He had, <laughs> he had to, to pick, pick you up. up. Oh my gosh. I was not allowed yeah, to no, be anywhere not. near control. Ooh were not you were so drunk you didn't even talk it was weird yeah so on the second day <laughs> Kois, you're so drunk you shut the fuck up <laughs> Kel surprise. that's usually a bad sign so on the second day koes it's more solemn right so people dress up still sometimes as members of dionysus's entourage and they visited others family friends whoever uh and they drank and this is you know still happy but not rococious partying partying um and people would also do um a ceremonial marriage to dionysus particularly priestesses of dionysus mm -hmm. um and um there was like a bunch of handmaids and maybe there's ritual sex involved. It got a little weird. Um, now, the last day, Kithroi was dedicated to the dead. And this was also considered a day of merrymaking. So in modern times, particularly in Western culture, we have this idea that if you're dedicating a day to the dead, it has to be like sad and like solemn. But sure. no, like there's a, you know, there's there's definitely this part where it's like, you know, being being happy for the ones that have passed on because they are um, hopefully. They've answered the universal question. <clears throat> what is next? Yeah, yeah. I'm a, a hundred percent in support of corpse parties. Um, being sad at funerals is not the right way to do shit, in my opinion. Like, I completely respect and understand like sad times right i understand that yeah i jesus christ i've been to so many funerals so yeah i totally understand that but at the same time like nobody's allowed to be sad at my funeral it's this is in public now everybody knows <laughs> my funeral big fucking party you're not allowed to be sad it should be a party right because you guys still don't have the answer and guess what i have motherfucking answers kapow <laughs> um so yeah seriously i've always 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 been in support of like like party style yeah. funerals and not sad style funerals like yeah a hundred percent of the time i fully understand this yeah like don't make it a sad time like make it a good time because a funeral is not for the dead it's for the fucking living my, my guys you know so have a good time about it remember and 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 you know party do shots that kind of a thing <laughs> You know, yeah. So you know, you know how I am, and my family is about yeah. uh, shots for past people. You know, <laughs> yeah. So offerings were also made to Dionysus on this day. I mean, of course, you could do it through the whole festival, but today was like the day, the third day um, for it. So you'd make offerings to Dionysus as well as to Hermes because of his connection with the dead and, mm -hmm. and leading them to the afterlife, as well as other loved ones who pass. Um, and it was very common to go to a dead loved one's gravesite and literally pour one out for the homies. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of times, especially in larger city centers, where people were like, um, you know, coming from far away to party. They don't really have a funeral, you know, like a cemetery they're going to go to. They would just like pour one out there. Like you're at a beer fest. You just whoop, yeah. tip that. Pour I've one seen out that at a beer fest, pouring one out for the homies. It's always a little shocking. So yeah, yeah rock yeah. and roll. Uh, and then at the very end of the festival, there was a ritual cry, which is really more like a shout, uh, that banished the Kiris and ordered the dead to return to the underworld. Mm. So at the end of being shit housed for three days, you just screamed into the woods. Yeah, gangster. Yeah, I support this. I support this party. Also, we're doing one of these as well. <laughs> Fuck it, we're doing all of them. Yeah, 
Yeah. So those are kind of the two main blueprints that all of his, um, you know, sort of larger festivals go along with. Yeah. Now, getting into some of the more, they're still popular, but like a little more weird things are the Eleusinian mysteries. And we talked about these way more in depth in the in episode 23, which is the Persephone deep dive. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to go super into, into in depth here, but um, basically the mysteries were like, mysterious secretive religious um rites and yeah. they typically it's just a secret cult yeah and they typically happened during the um like spring sort yeah. of like around spring equinox yeah. or maybe a little before maybe a little after sort of depending on the time and secret. then also in the fall so yeah. the eleusinian myth mysteries basically happened when persephone came out of the underworld or went into the underworld um now at some point we did mention earlier dionysus became associated with other deities mm -hmm. and the one that ties him to this festival is iacus which is demeter's consort i want to say husband but i don't know that it's quite that complicated um now in the orphic tradition because this kind of splits into two places with sure. eleusinian mysteries yeah. as well as the it's it's complicated yeah. watch right? the persephone deep dive if you don't know what we're yeah. talking about the eleusinian mysteries are yeah well mysterious i think is probably the appropriate yeah, word we for talk, that come to we find talk out pretty in depth about them so in the orphic tradition dionysus was the son of persephone and that ties him with this also if he's I'm sorry he was the son of persephone and, and the dad and demeter's consort well that doesn't just because it's demeter's the dad consort and doesn't the mean that it's the dad it just means that demeter demeter was fucking her no, daughter's no kid. it's the same it's the same. Jesus The Christ. father okay. and the... Yeah. So we also see some triple god... It's not how time works, but all right. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. So we also see some triple god connotations here, and that kind of has to do with why he is shown as Demeter's consort as well as the son of Persephone. Because, because the Eleusinian Mysteries really has to do with Persephone and Demeter and the underworld and the spring yeah. and the seasons yeah. and that yeah. sort of stuff, yeah. tying him in is sort of an interesting piece. And I don't know how he got tied in specifically and yeah. most scholars don't because it happened a very long time ago and none of us were there again if you're an immortal please let us know yeah. uh and scary. also like there's very limited information you imagine, from this could long you ago imagine just like let's 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 run this 90 sitcom style could you imagine if like your son was the reincarnated lover of your mom, you would be like, hey, guess what? I don't like this fucking kid. Yeah. <laughs> He's being a dick. Yeah. Now, we do <laughs> see triple god connotations here, like I was saying, with Dionysus being born three times. So during the Eleusinian Mysteries, part of the ritual that, as we understand it today, is that Dionysus is first born of Zeus and Persephone. And that is Dionysus Zagreus. And then he mm. dies. And then he is born again as the as the son of Samel, which is Dionysus Bromios. Yeah. And then he dies. And then he is born again. And this third time he is born Christ, as the son that. of Demeter or the husband of Demeter. There's not a whole we don't we don't know. Um, both is my guess. Um, and that is Dionysus Iacus. I don't have answers. It only gives more questions. It's very confusing. Yeah. It is very confusing. Yeah. I was, I. You need like a. I, I chart. want to say in the Hades game, Zagreus is Hades' kid, but I don't know that that Zagreus is also shown as the son of Hades and Persephone. Okay, gangster. Too. Okay, cool. I was just like, mm, I feel like that's how that name was. I am purely talking about a video game and not myth. But I'm just, anytime we talk about any of this Greek shit, I'm just like, how does it relate to my video game? I'm very addicted. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, that's a nightmare and not how time works. Next. Yeah. Now, before <laughs> we move on, there are, there, there is, we are going to talk more about this triple god connotation here with the Hades and the Zagreus thing in a minute. So next, we're going to talk about the Bacchic or the Dionysian mysteries. Now, this is not to be confused with Bacchanalia, because we're going to talk about that after this. So the Bacchic and Dionysian mysteries are probably also invented by Orpheus, much like the Eleusinian mysteries. Now, we don't know how 
they got there or what the difference is or even particularly when this happened. But my guess is that there were people who wanted to go to the Lucinian mysteries and they were like, these suck. We should make our own mystery cult. And they did. So that is this Bacchic or Dionysian mysteries. Now, some scholars also think that all of these mystery cults were facets of the same mystery religion and not separately worshipped as was previously or some, by some people still currently thought um, because Persephone and Dionysus featured so prominently in all of the mystery religions. It's kind of this idea that maybe they were really all the same and we're only hearing bits and pieces from people who were talking about it. So originally the Bacchic or Dionysian mysteries were more about male fertility and sexuality. Uh, whereas the more Persephone based ones are more about female sexuality. But later on, these Dionysian mysteries evolved to include the changing roles of women, particularly the change between maiden and mother. And we kind of have that piece there included. So it sort of makes them a bit more the same than they were previously different. Uh, and the Bacchic and Dionysian mysteries often included sacrifices of goats and bulls being particularly associated with Dionysus. Some participants also wore wooden masks while they partied and consumed only bread and wine for the entire time. Um, and it was also pretty common to have a wooden statue of Dionysus or use a tree or use a pole, which was clothed and decorated in the midst of the celebration. Uh, and this is still probably an indoor celebration, may have been outside in a courtyard. Uh, and this is where we see more triple god associations be, uh, with this Bacchic Dionysian Mysteries thing. Supposedly, an oracle of Apollo stated that Zeus and Hades and Helios Dionysus. Helios is the sun god in ancient Greek culture. Yeah. Um, and they were three gods in one godhead. And that was sort of the piece about this Bacchic Dionysian mysteries. And using that information, we could infer that uh, actually the Eleusinian mysteries is talking about similar triple god connotations. We just don't have the connective tissue to tie them together. So in the Eleusinian I mean, sure, mysteries yeah, piece, the, the Eleusin Dionysus Zagreus, Zagreus is the son of Persephone yeah. and Hades. And the Samel thing doesn't entirely get there too, but we kind of have a lot of different pieces here with this. So yeah, Zagreus, Bromius, and Iacus. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it's three. So it is three. They're both three. So yes. We can count guys, <laughs> right? One. Ah, ah, ah. You know how this goes. Yeah. Uh <laughs> Yeah. And this is really interesting because throughout a lot of cultures, there are several instances of triple God sides of things, but they mostly are in the Celtic and in the Greek side of things. And um, there is most of the triple God stuff, triple deity stuff, if you will, mm -hmm. that we talk about has to do with triple goddess, maiden, mother, crone. But I mean, really, you have the same thing with men. You have basically young man, Mandan. <laughs> nope, nope. And nope. then you have father, and then you also have crone. Yeah. So, you know, you do have these for- Boy. You have boy. <laughs> yeah, you gotta say, you gotta, you gotta drop it like as low as your body you have can- boy. <laughs> No, that's not it. That's not it. Let me try that again. was strongly not it. You get one more gin. Come on, boy, boy. Yeah, well, you, it's that's, right. that's the best. You're I got. trying. You're trying. That's the right? best I got. So you got boy, boy, and then oh, that was better. Dad, and then dad, and then just like that old asshole who's <laughs> that old bugging guy. you at a restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> You've got a man who's telling you to stay off his lawn. Yeah. So, um, you know, we do see that too. So it's interesting. <laughs> defender to know. of lawns. Boy, dad, defender of lawns. <laughs> Is that the maiden mother crown of men? <laughs> yeah, it is. It uh, definitely is. What do it you think is. they are? Tell us below. <laughs> Uh, so it is really interesting when it comes to the triple God side of things. I was pretty fascinated by the, the ties there. Nice. Now we're going to take all of this stuff that we just talked about with all these festivals. Throw in the garbage. No. And okay. we are going to mishmash it all together. Mm. And Throw that's. Throw in the blender. 
basically bacchanalia. Yeah. Now it's a ninja blender. <laughs> smooth transition into an advertisement for. I don't know if ninja makes blenders. They probably do. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, got it. Got so bacchanalia. There's there's a lot to unpack about bacchanalia, and actually. Yeah. There's been a lot to unpack about all of this, really. This is a very beefy episode. So um, a lot of Bacchanalia has to do with politics and fake news. And um, what's that movie where, with Kevin Bacon where the town doesn't want the kids to dance, but the kids want to dance anyway? Oh, my fucking God. What is the name of that <laughs> The only word, the only name that's coming to mind is Roadhouse, and I don't think that's it. It's definitely not Roadhouse. <laughs> Although I did just recently watch Roadhouse on ABC <laughs> at like two o'clock in the morning, and I stayed up for one hundred percent of that movie, and it started at two a.m. I'm not proud of that, but that movie is confusing. Okay, mostly. so what is that fucking movie called? Continue. So, over time. Bacchanalia festiv festivities were merged with Liberalia and Dionysia celebrations and celebrating Bacchanalia separately or in the quote unquote old ways was actually outlawed. Uh, and part of this is because Bacchanalia celebrations encouraged what I'm going to say is the sexual mixing of classes and genders, basically free for all sex in the streets. Mm -hmm. um, and this was frowned upon by those who were in power. So to understand more about this. Why? We're going to talk about liberalia we'll get there so liberalia was cel was a was celebrated by a state sanctioned cult in rome called liber and this was typically celebrated on march 17th the state sanctioned part is important here um, now the followers of this cult were typically commoners who worshipped the aventine triad these deities were more or less shoehorned in becoming dionysus that was liber turning into Dionysus, Demeter, Ceres' mother, um, and the uh, Ceres, um, whose mother to Lieber. Yeah, uh, Ceres' mother of Yes, <laughs> I was like, how did I, yeah, why just, did I write just, that? You just wrote that I down. wrote that in a weird way. It's, it's okay. and, and Prosperina, Persephone, um, who was Libera, who was sister and consort to Lieber. So. Yeah, that's an and, not an or, my dude. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus she's Christ. both. Okay. Uh, according to Livy, who was a friend of the emperor, he lived in 59 BCE to 17 CE. He said that Bacchanalia was held three times a year and it was originally restricted to women. But later on, people of all genders and social classes turned this festival into a sexual free for all, complete with heavy drinking, feasting and loud music. Remember the Kevin Bacon movie? Yeah. It's exactly that. This was frowned upon by those in power because it violated the social and religious and moral laws at the time. And it allowed room for a secretive culture which could possibly incite a revolution against the current rulers of the Roman Empire. Hmm. This is what I'm going to say about rulers. Let me just get it. Let's, 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 let's take a little... Let's take a little aside for a second. If you're in charge of some shit and you think that the way you should rule is by limiting the free shit that your people can do, um, you're you're a monster. It's footloose. Yeah, it's footloose. It's totally footloose. <laughs> yeah. Is it dirty dancing? No, it's, is it step it up all or nothing? It's none of Definitely those. not the best it's of the of step those. it it's up none of those. Basically, the Basically, the Roman ruling class were like footloosing about Bacchanalia. Well, I don't, I don't know if <laughs> Footloosing is the bad guy's side of the movie Footloose. I feel like Footloosing would be it is definitely the, the, good guy's the, side. the good guy's side. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, now, modern scholars are pretty skeptical of Livy's writings because they seem to be very fake news. And Livy didn't actually like poor classes, which were largely uneducated. Uneduc he yeah. also didn't like women and those outside of typical heterosexual presentation. Or as he put it, Quote, men most like women. It sounds like, quote. it sounds like Livy, this is a dude? Yeah. Okay, it sounds like Livy was a fucking idiot. Yeah. So rock yeah. and roll that guy. And he guess. thought all of those people, so the poor, the uneducated, the women, and those who don't necessarily present as hetero, like... <laughs> heterosexual males, mm -hmm. I mean, manly men, basically. Mm -hmm. He thought all those people were anti-Rome. So there's some mm. horrifying um, chorus, correlations yeah. to things I mean, today. what it sounds like is Livy, real piece of shit, also anti-Rome, dude. 
Really? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so as a result of Livy, because he was so high in power, um, Bacchanalia celebrations were so heavily restricted by laws, they might as well have been outlawed. Basically, he was like, there are too many women to men during these festivals. So they literally made a rule mm -hmm. that said that you can have no more than five people at a time mm -hmm. in one place celebrating Bacchanalia, and three of those people must be men. And only two of those people can be women. Okay, so... Fuck this guy? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, um, what? And not only that, people who did celebrate Bacchanalia even people who legally celebrated, although a ton of people illegally celebrated, yeah, were basically people. hunted and persecuted relentlessly and mercilessly on a level that you could compare yes. to the Salem witch trials. Sounds like he's a simple bitch and uh, Livy, the simple bitch, um, wasn't able to understand that sometimes people want to party also, if, again, freedom questions your authority, you don't have any actual authority. You're just an idiot piece of shit. Like, uh, I don't know. Run him over with a chariot. Or something. Or something. Now, a prime <laughs> myth of Dionysus revolves around him being torn apart as a baby. Mm -hmm. And so the practice of tearing apart animals and eating their raw flesh was okay. practiced by some people at these festivals. 5% chance you were going to say tearing apart babies. And I was going to be like, well, now I look like a jackass <laughs> supporting motherfuckers. No, no, no. Tearing hang on. Babies. I'm not done. I'm not done. Damn. I'm not done. Obviously, we still Bro. have a podcast to go. Yeah. Um, but the practice of tearing apart animals and eating their raw flesh um, aside, horrifying um was practiced by some people at these festivals and not just any of these yeah. not just this one festival but all of the festivals yeah. really um and people did that um typically to become more one with dionysus it yeah. was not super common but it definitely happened and one of the things that that livy did like about this festival or mm. rather didn't hate about this festival mm. is that okay this guy is clearly the piecest of shit piece of shit that's ever pieces of shit you know what i'm saying yeah like dude fuck this guy wow oh my god oh, yeah Christ. so it is interesting because when one thinks of dionysus they often think of bacchanalia and th those sort of connotations for the bacchanalia side of things yeah. um is very like rococious wild party drinking and drugs and sex and mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. uh, but actually it was one of the first ones to to sort of stop being celebrated purely because of the law. And yeah. actually this might even Not have even something to do one with the secret because of one things. asshole. Yeah. Who and, was like lame. Uh, yeah. Maybe we revisionist history. Livy sounds like he was a fucking loser and didn't get invited to any of the gangster parties. So he decided to take it out on all the cool people. Uh, that's actually what most modern scholars think about him. Yeah, I mean, so it that's sounds not like this even guy a was just take. a loser that and nobody liked him. That's just people going like, wow, this guy was awful. Yeah. Don't be um, a loser, guys. And as a result Try of harder. him, that may be why we see so many of these secret cults and mystery cults associated with Greek gods and particularly those ones that we talked about dealing with Dionysus because those cults would have probably been happening either at the time of Livy or after Livy because of just sort of the timing of when those cults were happening. Um, so there's a ton to unpack with that. Um, now, there are some other festivals associated with Dionysus, mostly regarding winemaking and theater or harvest stuff. And we just simply do not have enough time to talk here about those festivals. But if you are interested, um, they are Haloa, which is H-A-L-O-A, -A, Ascolia, a-S-C-O-L-I-A -A and Lanaya, L-E-N-A-I-A. -A. Uh, and they're pretty interesting, um, but there's not as much information about them. And like I said, we just don't quite have time for that. So um, next, we're going to talk about how we handle worshiping or working with Dionysus. Yeah. Yes, I have a plan for this. <laughs> I don't have a fucking plan for this. Why, why am I getting put on the spot here? You know how I handle all of this stuff? Winging it. Everything I do, 100% of my life, wing, wong. 
Yeah. Wonged. Right? I, I'm not... This is... Uh, that. How do you worship Dionysus, you <laughs> <Yeah>. fucking monster? <laughs> Put me on the spot like this? You see, I'm trying to send a text message here, not paying attention to this podcast like an irresponsible ass adult. Well, that's your fault. It's, it's fucking 1040 at night. I got business to attend to or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> so, <Monster? laughs> so this year we celebrated Anthestria, uh, but we definitely did not have all of the deep Is dive. Anthestria info. and Anthesteria different things? Yes. Okay, gangster. Because you said Anthestria, and I can see that that is written out as Anthestria, and I'm just like, I thought it was pronounced Anthesteria, and oh, I don't really know one. what that was. Because I'm not paying attention. Yeah. So that good. we so we celebrated I was that. Damn. And um, we definitely had like a low key celebration for that. But now that we have all of like the deep deep info, I think mm. that we'll be able to have a super fun time with that next time. Oh my god. Yeah. Um. And it's funny because we, Are we just have passed like a weird the equinox. Getting kicked out by the law party. Yeah. Oh my god. Let's is baby gonna get put in a corner? That's a different movie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I don't really remember Footloose. Uh, Footloose and Dirty Dancing might be the same movie in my They're mind. definitely not the same movie. But are they though? <laughs> What's the difference? Um, most of the work that I would <laughs> say that I've done with Dionysus is actually in making your your crown, your Dionysus crown. It has like little faux grape leaves. If you're and just tiny listening to grapes. this, you can't hear my spirit fingers. That's or true. Can you? Um, and it's got like some little flowers yeah. as well as there's some amethyst on there. Yeah. So uh, for me, doing like crafting or meditating are the ways that I tend to work yeah. with a deity. And I actually did not know before doing research with this that Dionysus handles uh, a lot of anxiety side of things. Stuff, and yeah. I definitely am going to be using some anxiety help from Dionysus in the future. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I guess I, oh, man, I don't like Dionysus falls in the, in the like category the like subcategory of worship in my mind where within he's just like it's just like a thing when i'm like you know like like i've had two beers and then i'm my my body is making the decision is it is it three beers time <laughs> right because three beers is pretty much the same as like seven beers <laughs> Right? Like two beers, <laughs> two beers, that's church. But like three beers, that's seven beers. And seven beers probably included some shots in there that I forgot about because I had seven fucking beers. So why not rock and roll? Um, so like that's kind of a different thing. I don't know that Dionysus, I feel like as a general sort of like observational thing for me, um, especially because I'm like very Norse gods. Um, I feel like Greek gods are one of those, like, just sometimes that shit makes sense kind mm -hmm. of a thing. Right. And, and, and to that end, right. I would argue that like the two Greek gods that I, for a lack of better words, work with idolize same time, um, is Dionysus and Hades. Yeah. Right? Like um Which is funny because of the triple god thing that we talked yeah, about. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. No, no, it's it's perfectly reasonable. It's perfectly reasonable. I mean, what was the third one? Zeus? Zeus. Uh, I don't know about Zeus. That guy's kind of a cunt. Um, I mean, if you look at it, if you look at the, I just, Zeus, is, Zeus is just like vaguely a prick in everything that's ever been written yeah. about Zeus. So maybe, except for the Hercules movie, where he seems to be a perfectly loving father against all odds and for no uh, reason, yeah. because the Hercules movie makes no sense. I mean, beautiful music and it, it's fun, <laughs> but um, yeah, I feel like somebody went to remedial Greek gods to write that movie. <laughs> That, they don't even really make sense. Uh, no, they totally I don't. don't. I don't want to talk about it. They didn't make uh, sense when the movie first came out, so it's not like it's news. <laughs> if you think that if you if you were basing all of your Greek god knowledge on Hades, the movie uh, Hercules, the movie Jesus, um, well, uh, we've got a bunch of stuff to share with you, and most of it's <laughs> that you were wrong. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. Dionysus is just like 
I don't it's just like a chill party god. Yeah. Right? He's like he's like whatever, Thunder Wolf or whatever that character is from Laser Wolf. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. If you don't know what Laser Wolf is, then I have no possible way of describing that to you. I've seen every episode of Laser Wolf and I frankly can't tell you what it is. I've seen most of it and I don't yeah. barely understand it. So uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah so um we have as per usual some spells hard were, transition yeah hard transition <laughs> i'm just gonna talk about something else now just like this guy's <laughs> rambling and circling <laughs> ch- change subjects what S- if baby wasn't put in a corner <laughs> still the wrong fucking movie it's still i mean at least you keep going back to the same movie that's the wrong movie i gotta yeah. give you that yeah consistency it's because i'm holding back all of the bring it on all or nothing (laughs) yeah it's fine so these spells were written by uh us and they don't have any connection to historical or traditional practices just a disclaimer there these are just our spells for dionysus yeah so the first one is an invocation for dionysus and this one you can use um just sort of like by itself or you can include this one with other ritual work either inside of a ritual or include other ritual work inside of it um and it goes a little something like this dionysus he who prevails i call upon you grant me courage to be my authentic self to the world teach me the value of rebirth so i can reinvent myself bless me with ecstasy and and abundance so i can live my best life uh, and then here you can pause, provide an offering or do ritual work, meditate as desired, or you can just kind of keep moving to the next thing, which, uh, which is the last thing. And that is wild and roaring Dionysus. He who rules the faith, the faith. I thank you. Nice. So nice little invocation for Dionysus for whatever thing you particularly want to do with it. And then the other spell we have is a really simple spell to help relieve social anxiety. And this one is meant to be done either, um, you know, whatever it is that you're doing on the fly in a way that nobody even knows secret magic. Um, And the only thing you need for this is a drink. And that drink doesn't even have to be alcoholic. If you're not a drinker, you can have a glass of water. It does not matter. Uh, So first you're going to hold the drink. You're going to briefly clear your mind. Uh, And once you're ready, visualize energy moving from your hands, which are holding your drink, um, into the drink, filling it with calming and uplifting energy and sort of whatever else it is that you need at that moment. Is it courage? Then also add courage. But just like imagine it as like a mist that sort of goes into it. You've seen stuff in TV and movies. You can do whatever your headcanon is. Um, And once you feel like you've put enough energy in it to help you push aside your anxiety for this particular moment, say aloud or in your mind, castle three times Dionysus the liberator help me push aside anxiety and enjoy myself just repeat that three-ish or so times uh, and then when you're done compose yourself drink your drink and have a great time nice. yeah man nice and simple I dig it I dig it yeah yeah so we're gonna move on to Julie Reading lists reading lists yeah so to um recap dionysus is the greek god of wine and orchards vegetation debauchery male fertility festivity ecstasy insanity resurrection death and those who do not fit into conventional society yeah. in the theater and the theater yeah yeah i had that highlighted didn't even say it um <laughs> I was I was uh, I was in the zone. So um, his uh, animals associated with him are um, there are more of all of these things, by the way, these correspondences like a bunch of stuff. If you want the complete list of correspondi and such, uh, those will be available on uh, the Book of Shadows page for this. So, uh, yeah. And if you want access to our Book of Shadows page, that's on Patreon. That's right. Walker. That's right. So Dionysus' animals are the bull and the goat. Very, very connected to him, both of them. His colors are green and purple. 
Very mm. much those. Mm. Um, I do love those colors. Yeah. And stones that are associated with um, Dionysus are amethyst as well as fluorite, which combines both green and purple. Uh, and any green or purple stone. Yeah. Um, plants are... Purple. Purple. Yeah. Um, plants associated with Sorry. him are fennel and hawthorn, ivy and pine, and really any vining plant. Other deities that are similar to Dionysus, for those of you who are interested in sort of seeing that connective tissue or you don't particularly practice Greek pantheon, you want to look for something else, are Kernunos or the Green Man. Also, Loki and Odin have striking similarities to a lot of the facets of Dionysus. Yeah. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can kind of blend those together. Uh, Osiris as well. Uh, and for food, uh, booze. All of that booze, alcohol, non-alcoholic booze even. So booze. Um, also bread and figs and grapes and legumes uh, and walnuts. And I'm also going to venture out here to say sushi because uh, of raw meat being a common uh, thing at one of his sure, things. You sure. don't have to go all golem on it, but you know. Have yourself some sushi and like a nice glass of wine or a nice beer. It would be a very cool meal for yeah. honoring Dionysus. Or a bunch of beer. Or a bunch of sushi. Why yeah. not both? Yeah. Drink um, responsibly. Honorable mention to steak tartare as well. Yeah. Um, other symbols associated with him are baskets and crowns and cups. Any sort of intoxicant, if you are interested in that sort of thing. Uh, masks, also percussion instruments, and literally any phallic symbol. <laughs> percussion instruments. What is that? Drums? What's up? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, uh, it it seems that we're at the end of a deep dive into Dionysus. So before we wrap everything up, I would firstly like to firstly, beginningly, whatever, like to thank our patrons. <laughs> I'm, man, I don't know, whatever. I've been drinking for a while. Uh, I would like to thank our patrons, Alan, Miranda, Alexa, Helena, Jeff, and Adrian. You guys are gangster. Stay gangster. Yeah, uh, thank you for helping us do what we do a little bit better every time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And if you would like to support this kind of stuff, comma, slash, and or want access to the Book of Shadows pages, uh, that's where that that's where that is. That's all on our Patreon. So check that out. We're at Nerdjive on Patreon. Um if you're listening to this on your podcast network of choice, leave us a review or hit us up on social media and be like, I listen, what's up? What's my number? Uh, because it's probably eight because we have seven right now. So what's up? Um, and maybe we'll start randomly assigning numbers too. Who knows? We might start randomly assigning numbers. I can't promise I'm going to remember it, but I don't remember anything. So that's not how this works. <laughs> Um, it's not like jerseys. I don't think you'd have to have one person with only the, the I mean, the, they recycle jersey numbers. Oh, they do? Okay. Yeah. I don't Man. do sports ball. What? Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, I don't I don't know how to handle that information. <laughs> um it's been a while. It's been a while. I had to ask uh, my coworkers if the if the Golden State Warriors were doing some sort of sports ball thing the other day. Be I'm, we were talking I'm about sorry, lighting guys. up a building in Ukraine colors, and they uh -huh. were like, what if people think it's the Golden State Warriors? And I was like, oh, are they doing a sports ball sorry, thing right now? Does the Warriors have blue in their shit? Yeah, they're blue and, they're blue and yellow. Same colors. I don't... That doesn't sound right. Okay, It definitely whatever. is. Trust um, me. I didn't know that. Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm not a Golden State Warriors fan, but that's... I'm, I don't dislike them either i just nothing that yeah i don't care about the sports ball. um yeah geez julie oh sports come on man what's your favorite football team comment below um <laughs> go vikings obviously they're purple uh, and vikings also duh. uh but yeah so if you're listening to this on youtube don't forget to like this video comment below share subscribe ring the bell and do all that kind of stuff uh either way I have been John Norgrove. This has been Julie Norgrove. This has been the Horn and, and Cauldron. Cauldron. There you Podcast. go. She's paying attention. Cauldron Podcast. There you go. Uh, the next next episode is a pub chat. We're going to actually do it this time. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been a while. Um, and that's so that'll come out uh, April 4th. 
Um, and that will be about some stuff. I, I, I'm not in charge of what those are about. That's honestly. me. I'm in charge of She's that. She's in Don't charge worry. of that. Yeah. I just do all of the editing and such. Uh, and then after that is our next a uh, full length episode and this is technology in magic or technomancy yeah. and i have a bunch of fucking opinions about this yeah um yeah are are you a member of any of the technomancy subreddits on reddit i don't think so oh i have a bunch of opinions about this because I'm a member of several of those, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have I have science opinions about magic, so be prepared for that shit. Yeah. Uh, so that'll be very exciting, and probably another long guy. So deal with that. But but we've uh, had a few short ones lately, so we're kind yeah, of it, it, it all works out. Kind of sometimes it's shorter than it feels. Sometimes it's longer than it feels. Sometimes that's because the internet giveth, and sometimes that's because the internet taketh away. So uh, yeah, we will catch you guys next time. Stay magical, folks. Yeah, and don't forget, breathe in self-confidence and breathe out self-doubt.